as a kid, I used to love drawing, decorating my hallway with crayons, you know, as a kid and getting told off. But, but I got, I guess, into graffiti uh, 20 years ago, sort of late 90s. A friend of mine introduced me to it. He um, bought around some marker pens and we sat down and made some names on, you know, and, and went out and just, just tagged stuff, really. Um, I've got hundreds of these sort of books um, and they're basically just things you can do when it's when the weather's bad and you can't paint um, so none of these are specifically for anything um, these are just sketches to give me ideas when you turn up to a wall this one today is roughly based on this one um, and sort of I, I redrew it and like that so that's that's what I've designed for today but you know I could pick any one of these and paint you might find a wall with a big hole in it, you know, or uh, a vent or something like that. So for me, the more choice I have in different styles and, and shapes, I guess, that will fit the space, because certain things I've designed which wouldn't fit in this, in this particular shape, it would be wider. So, you know, you've got to try and pick your spots and, and get the right design to go with it, really. I paint a lot of pop sort of culture and... Yeah generally things that I grew up with as a kid uh, so I do a lot of stuff from the 80s and 90s but yeah I mean it's just things I like generally and I find that you know you can paint letters all day but people generally don't understand it but as soon as you put a face on a wall people get it I know a lot of people walk this way just to see the art and it's a lot of positive comments we get um, so yeah I mean it's yeah it's nice you know that people appreciate it finally because 20 years ago when we were doing it, it wasn't appreciated and street art wasn't a thing. It didn't, that word didn't even exist, you know, and over the time, people like, you know, your Banksies and uh, your Shepherd Fairies, they've yeah. put it in the spotlight of people and people are starting to understand it a bit more. I, I don't just base the, the, my favourite on, say, what it looks like at the end. It's the, you know, the, the journey or the yeah. stories that can be told, you know, I've, I've, when we used to paint trains, used to have some close encounters, you know, with, with trains and stuff like that. And but does that compare to a legal wall? I, I don't know, you know. So I've, they all they all vary, you know. They all have their special meanings and and uh, history to it, really. So some there's certain groups of people here that don't sort of agree with what we're doing. So um, they seem to destroy a lot of work, which it happens in graffiti. It's just one of the part and parcel of it really you know you're going to get painted over um, if you paint in London by the time you get home you've probably been painted over yeah. you know it's that the, the, the turn over there is because there's so many different writers there you know um, but I think it's healthy to be honest I mean if someone destroys my work gives me an, another reason to go out and do another thing you know and do it brighter and bigger mm. and better you know so you've just got to get over your ego I guess because if you've got an ego with this game, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be angry all the time, I think. So, um, you know, the council could come down one day and get rid of it all. They yeah, could just, yeah. you know, but it happens. You find new spots, you, you, you know. As long as you're pushing yourself each time, you know, which I like to think I do, 20 years in now, so I'm just going to keep going and, you know, enjoy it, I guess.